primary stability, which is essential for successful osseo integration, and the exact insertion torque that has been applied during the placement of the implant. If this number is above 25 or 30, it means primary stability is good, insertion torque is high, and you are allowed to use healing abutment and perform one stage surgery. But if not, if this number is lower, if it is below 20 or 30 newton centimeters, here you shouldn't take risks and should use a cover screw so that chewing forces during osseo integration don't put pressure on the fixture and don't jeopardize integration. Therefore, final number during implant insertion is important. This is important for implant surgery single stage or two stage. 20 to 25 newton centimeters is a reliable cutoff for deciding whether to use a healing abutment or a cover screw. With the new trend of immediate load and temporary prosthesis, you need a minimum insertion torque of 30 to 35 newton centimeters. This number is extremely important. In the occlusal view, you can see that the implant is completely separated from the buccal surface. This gap between the implant and the buccal surface must be filled with bone material. The old concept that if this gap was small, you not use bone material. Don't do gap grafting. If it was large, you would do gap grafting. Considering the sensitivity regarding implants in the aesthetic and anterior region, you absolutely must perform gap grafting in this space between the implant and the buccal wall. If the socket is intact like this, that's good, all the walls are healthy. Maybe a simple allograft can provide you with a suitable gap graft at minimal cost and with high predictability. We place our bone material not only precisely between the fixture and the bony wall, but also even as a supportive element behind the free gingival margin. So don't just do a gap graft along the internal bony areas, but also add some extra bone material on top of that to serve as support for the free gingival margin, so that the free margin doesn't collapse and can maintain its projection in the aesthetic zone. In the image, you can see the healing abutment and the cover screw if my insertion torque was low, if the primary stability was weak, if my insertion torque was below 20 or 25 newton centimeters. Well, in that case, I have to use a cover screw and perform the implant surgery in two stages. After four or five months, I would then come back to uncover it and only then attach the healing abutment. This is out of concern that during those four or five months, chewing forces and food impacts might move the implant and interfere with osseo integration. But if not, if the torque insertion was good and the primary stability was solid, then I can use a healing abutment. As you can see, it's a long screw. It's possible that some force might be applied to it during function and while chewing food. So, the implant needs to be very stable if you want to use a healing abutment during the first stage of surgery. That's why I mentioned, if the torque insertion is more than 20 or 25 newton centimeters, then go ahead and use the healing abutment. Here, the surgery is done in a single stage so there's no need for uncovering later. After four or five months, once the initial healing and osseo integration period is over, we go straight to impression taking. It's natural to use a healing abutment because it acts as a tent, helping to maintain the soft tissue for us a bit. Because it supports both bone material and soft tissue, it gives gum better shape and microaesthetics. It provides better beauty and better emergence profile for your implant in anterior and aesthetic areas. I'm using a hex driver or a healing abutment wrench to tighten the healing abutment. You need to be careful that, unlike uncovering surgery where we always recommend using a healing abutment 2 to 4 millimeters above the free gingival margin, it's not necessary to use tall healing abutments because functional forces and chewing might cause the healing abutment to move which could also move the fixture. So in a one-stage surgery 
if insertion torque is good, if primary stability is good, if you want to use a healing abutment, a short healing abutment that's flush with gum is enough. There's no need to use very tall healing abutments. Later, with tissue shrinkage, this healing abutment will definitely appear more prominent above the gum and you won't lose track of your healing abutment. Don't worry. I took the bone graft and it's done. As I mentioned, bone grafting absolutely must be done. Don't worry about how big your buckle gap is, small or large. You absolutely have to do a graft. Regardless of how big or small the gap, it should always be on the buckle side. If you see a gap on the palatal side, that's a mistake. You need to remove the fixture and redo the drilling and correct the fixture's position. The next point about choosing bone material, as I mentioned, allografts, because they have a shorter integration period compared to xenografts and alloplasts, might be an ideal choice for a socket with a complete and healthy wall. High quality xenografts are not only less expensive, but also give better results and have shorter healing period. Bone material placement should be both inside bony walls and on top to gum. The philosophy of placing bone material both inside bony crest and above it, flush with gum margin, is called dual zone graft. First zone is inside bone and second zone, serving as soft tissue support, is not meant to integrate with bone. It provides support for soft tissue. I place bone material in both these zones. Both the zone inside the bone and the zone outside the bone serve as soft tissue support, which I refer to as the dual zone graft. To contain my bone material and prevent it from spilling out, I usually place a membrane, a dermis, or even a gel foam, just to make sure the bone material doesn't come out. And then, to keep the whole setup, meaning the gel foam, fixed on top of the bone material and to make sure the clot stays in place, I usually use a figure of eight suture or a modified figure of eight suture. As you can see, a one stage fresh socket surgery in the aesthetic zone. The healing abutment has been placed on the fixture. The bone graft has been placed in the buccal area. A membrane or gel foam has been placed over it and fixed with a figure of eight suture so that the bone graft doesn't spill out. This is the final view of the work. We discharge the patient so that the healing or osseointegration period can be completed. And after four months, the patient will be ready for impression taking. Pay attention to a few points. First, in this case, although I am performing GBR, although I am doing guided bone regeneration, it's true that the main principle of GBR is the membrane, but my socket has so many intact walls and is in such good condition that my GBR will very likely be successful. In other words, my GBR is low risk. That's why, in this case, using a membrane may not really be necessary. Even a simple gel foam can do the job of containing the bone material for you. But if not, if you've lost part of the buckle plate or part of the bone wall, do you want to reconstruct? Your GBR is no longer low risk. Traditional GBR principles apply. You need bone material and a membrane over it. That's the first point. The second point is about the buccal soft tissue thickness. If it's very thin, we also need to perform a connective tissue graft year. That means we should use either CTG or dermal substitutes to increase the thickness of the buccal outer soft tissue. But if the thickness is acceptable, then a graft is not necessary.